All right, so let's do it. This is This Day in Baseball History for March 14th. Let's get into it. March 14th, 1954, Hank Aaron filling in for Bobby Thompson, who broke his ankle the day before, starts his first game wearing a Braves uniform. The 20-year-old from Mobile, Alabama, makes such an impression that the club offers him a major league contract after he collects three hits, including a home run in the spring training game against the Red Sox. Now, we, this is kind of interesting because uh, in our World Baseball Classic uh, mm -hmm. talk, there was actually a pitcher who struck out like Juan Soto and a couple other high prominent pitchers actually got a contract uh, through that. So Yeah, uh, someone on the uh, Nicaragua team, he got signed by the Tigers. That There you go. So uh, it happens. It, and, and it happened in 54 for Hank Aaron. And yeah. who knows? That, that guy could have a long career. But that, that, Well, that's I, I mean, I might have known something happened to Mr. Thompson. I, I mean, we're, we're past that. I'm, I'm okay to say that now, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. It's a safe space, Kevin. You, you can go okay. for it. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, you know, I, I didn't kill the guy. <laughs> I mean, I didn't do anything. Sorry. <laughs> Too soon. Me. Kevin. <laughs> wow. For life, pal. For life, pal. 100, 150 episodes. That's okay. That's It's rating. We're not making 151 if I keep making up crimes <laughs> like this. That's okay. That's uh, definitely <laughs> ratings, ratings, ratings. Um, March 14th, 1993, oh, no. <laughs> the Reds announce uh, – the uh, actually, the Reds announce Reds President Marge Schott's St. Bernard is being prohibited – access to the riverfront stadium field for the season uh the mandate to ban shotzi 2 comes two. from shotzi 2 uh, uh comes from major league baseball's executive council which has received numerous complaints from the players about the dogs running on the field <laughs> oh my gosh but just look at that god to robert i want to know who robert is he loves him she loves him. I wish it said to Cowboy Jack. Yeah. Oh, and that, that no signature, way. I always have to remind myself, that is a paw. Yes. And not, not what you think. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, well, hey, now. <laughs> yeah. Mark, Mark, Mark <laughs> shot knew how to sign a paper, dude. <laughs> now, guys, uh, is this where you want to announce a future uh, segment? <laughs> yes. I would love that. Next week, right here on the flagship Baseball Brew Crew, we will be doing a deep dive, hazy history into the Lady in Red Marge shot. I want to call it the Lady in Blood Red, personally. <laughs> uh, you know, we'll leave that up to you, how you feel about that, Mr. Durango. Uh, it's all smoke and mirrors. Uh, yeah, more smoke than mirrors, but uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot of smoke. A lot, a lot of, broken, of smoke. A lot of broken lot mirrors. Of too. Yeah, broken. <laughs> yeah, because you know she doesn't want those players look at the, in themselves with their earrings and their fake maybe facial hair. Oh, sorry, we're getting we're already yeah, going into K fizzle, K fizzle. Yeah, you're all getting right, ahead all right. of yourself. You're getting ahead of yourself. That's right. All right. Jack will remember that I talked about this next week. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. March 14th, 1994, Michael Jordan gets his first spring training hit, a single off the Mets' Jeff Innes. Oh, that's right. The hit happens to come on the same day he appears on the cover of Sports Illustrated. As legend has it, Michael Jordan never spoke to Sports Illustrated again after this cover. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> With good I, reason, yeah. dude. With good reason. <laughs> I, my face lit up because I was thinking it was going to be something else. But uh, if you go through our archives, we actually talked to Oakland Athletics pitching coach, current pitching coach, uh, Scott Emerson. And he actually gave up Michael's first hit, but it was in an exhibition game. Yes. And uh, oh, if you wow. go through if you look through and find that interview, he does talk about facing Michael Jordan. Yes. Yeah. yeah so I thought this was, this was a good one. And, uh, yeah, it was uh, – it was I guy. I can't believe that this was thirty years ago. Hey, uh, uh, can I say something to Michael Jordan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Exactly. Come exactly. On. Yeah. March fourteenth, two thousand and three. Baseball suspends Montreal outfielder Vladimir Guerrero Senior for three regular season games. And Marlins starter Brad Penny after uh, for five 
after igniting an ex an exhibition game bench clearing brawl <laughs> earlier in the week. Can Love you it. imagine getting like, a, a brawl in spring training? Well, I uh, dude, I think that's the appropriate time. That way, you know, you're not you're not bringing drama into the main season, dude. Just get it out of the way, dude. Get it out of the way. <laughs> Yes. It, oh my it, gosh. It seems to reason that that this kind of stems back to something that that was uh, a, a previous thing, and and that happens a lot. And and uh, actually, this kind of leads into something that we'll talk about uh, later in the episode. But uh, but it, baseball things seem to linger. Remember, um, well, we, when talked we talked about Brian Ventura. You know, they, 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 and it wasn't Robin Ventura, but it was just the, the, the team having a grudge against Nolan, you know, for well, getting, well, uh, well, that Graybeck. Gray Is that his name? Yeah, yes. I remember. Yeah. Yes, and, Graybeck. And, and uh, Gray you know, we, we talked about um, when Bob Gibson uh, and Pete LeCock, uh, <laughs> like he, 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 he beamed him in like an old timers game. Like he says, like, you don't, you don't, <laughs> you don't hit a home run off me. Nope. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Ian, thank you for uh, bringing this up. So the Montreal, I wish I, could, I, I wish I could show this. It's actually an M if you look at it. It looks like ELB, and, uh, but it's actually an M. So it's a three color M. And it's the Montreal, uh, so the one on the helmet is the one I'm talking about. Right. So I used to draw that logo a lot because it was actually one of the first logos that inspired me uh, to actually draw. I'm like, oh my gosh, like it looks like ELB, but it's actually an M. And so I used to hand draw that as a kid and it actually w started my my passion for branding and logos. And I used to draw uh, logos. And actually when I was, uh, I would say like 12 or 13, I used to sell hand drawn logos in a baseball card store so I could buy baseball cards. Wow. So it actually inspired me. So the, the fact that it's an, um, it's it's actually a really amazing logo and it, and the color scheme and everything is so cool and um yeah and and uh yeah so there you go so i i taught you something so there you go and so, uh, so yeah yeah this whole empire dude the the crown jewel of craft beer and baseball this podcast can be traced all the way back to the montreal expos logo um, it, it's, it's, it's definitely one of my inspirations. I mean, uh, there's so many logos and I, and actually I should do like a whole show on all the logos that inspired me. Like the, there was the, you know, the pirates logo during the seventies that there was a, actually a really cool Phillies logo that inspired me. So I'll definitely, uh, I should do a, a video on that because it, it made me a 30 year graphic designer. And, and, uh, back in the days when you actually had to do ha mechanicals and, and hand, uh, drawing for that kind of stuff. So, right. um, I, and again, I love the Florida Marlins as I look at the Marlins and it, it is in Florida anymore. It's now it's the, uh, Miami Marlins. So, um, yeah. So thank you so much for that, for, for making mention of that. So you got the opposite of the Montreal screw job out of this. <laughs> I, That's good. I don't know. I, it, it's a uh, graphic design is, is, uh, each year is a screw job. You have to find your, your way within it. You and definitely have to reinvent yourself. And Cowboy Jack, I got to ask, it looks like Brad Penny's been in quite a few fist, fisticuffs over the years. Did you ever, were you one of his, uh, did you get into a bar and brawl with this guy? Looks like you would have. I, I, quite possibly. Uh, there's there's periods of my life that are quite hazy, as it were. So uh, there's a good chance that me and old road dog Jesse James over there <laughs> tangled up, man. I might have chewed some of the same dirt. Awesome. Oh yeah, no that that guy definitely definitely believes in corporal punishment for his children. Like, <laughs> if I, that's the first thing that comes to mind is like, yeah, dude, he, he, his kids have a paddle with their initials like, embroidered into well, it, dude. Yes. Well, as a mandated reporter, I hope that I, I hope that's speculation on your part, sir. Yes, yes. <laughs> I have a feeling you're not going to take away his guns. <laughs> yes, dude. Yes. Yeah, dude. He's very passionate about my rights, dude. <laughs> well, moving on. Um, <laughs> we'll get your beers ready for this next story. That's right. March 14th, 2003. Bob Euchre, the Brewers TV radio play by play announcer, is chosen for induction into the broadcaster's wing of the Hall of Fame the recipient of the Ford C. Frick Award. The 68-year-old former backup catcher 
a member of Milwaukee's broadcast crew since 1971, is best known for his humor he has brought to the game through his starring role in cult movie, uh, well, a documentary, That's as documentary. Cowboy Jack says, Major League, and multiple Miller Lite beer commercials. So salute to Wait, uh, salute. Bob Euchre. Wait, Dude, drink uh, one down for a real one, man. Nobody realer than Bob friggin' Euchre. Um, Michael? Yes, sir? I thought that's the dad from Mr. Belvedere. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, he, had, he was in baseball? <laughs> yes, he had a he had a very short short baseball brief stint, career. dude. He had, he had a cup of coffee in baseball, brother. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. <laughs> yes, dude. Um, what just like young looking and vibrant and handsome, like Bob Euchre didn't do too great in the field, and so he still had such a passion for baseball. He still made a career out of baseball. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and he's still going. You said he was sixty eight then. Yeah. In in 2000, he's 88 and still going. Man, yeah. he, he yeah. you know what? He'll get, he might get to my age someday. Well, and, and I, this will be his, what his 53rd year, second year, something like that. 53rd yeah. year, yeah, something yeah. Like that's that, yeah. crazy with the Brewers. I mean, like again, uh, uh, definitely a, a Brewer legend uh, yes. to say the least. Dude, and the uh, man's a nat. He should be a nat. Like, why haven't we recognized him as a national treasure yet? Yeah, uh, he's there, isn't he? In, did he, he didn't make it in? <laughs> no, I mean, that, like, I'm talking nationwide, oh, not just. I'm talking about Diamond Icon. I'm like, isn't he a Diamond Icon? Yeah, no, <laughs> a Nash. This guy is, he should, like, you should go see the Grand Canyon, the I, the Statue of Liberty, whatever, yes. and yes. Bob friggin' Euchre. There you like, go. That's number one on my list. Well, Jack, if you go back into the archives, I actually did two videos on uh, Milwaukee. And literally, if you go, what the way that, Euchre's facing, which mm -hmm. is away from the field. If you go straight up, there is actually a statue at the very top of the stadium, behind a post. Uh, uh, that that actually, you can't. If you sit in the seat next to him, you can't see around this post. And it actually, it's dedicated to Bob Euchre. Yeah. So, wow. and that's like, yep. you, I think you make a donation to charity, you can get a photo with the statue. Yeah. Because it because I mean, if, now these people might not know what the commercials. It's mocking a commercial where. He's, he was coming down and he's like, Oh, I got a ticket in the front row. And, um, you know, it's like, hey, hey, buddy, come on, you got to come with me. Oh, that's what it was. He sat down and yeah. was like, Come on, I come must with me. In the front row. And then you look and he's at the very top. Yeah, very top. Of the stand yeah. going, wow. He missed the tag. He yeah, missed the yeah. tag. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, definitely one of those things you should you definitely can find check that out. on YouTube easily if you've never yeah, seen it. Sure, definitely a classic sure. commercial from like, I want to say 84, 85, something like that. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's end with this one. So March 14th, 2008, the Padres' new left-hander starter, Randy Wolf, struggles in a 6-2 spring training exhibition loss to the Brewers in Peoria, Arizona. The pitcher's brother, Jim, isn't much help as the home plate umpire. An occurrence not allowed during a regular season game and marking the only time is it, it has ever happened when the oh San Diego gosh. hurler gives up three runs in four innings. Wow. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Are you sure they're brothers? There's look at look at the look at the umpire's ears. I mean, come on. Exactly. Jeez. Well, he's, he's, he's a little bit more grizzled here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what a wild that's an insane story. I mean, just okay. only in baseball. Yeah, totally, totally. I mean, there's there's other times. I mean, I, I'm trying to think of like a football or basketball, but like in baseball, this this seems like this could this could happen, like like siblings playing together, uh father-son combinations, right. uh still playing. It, it's it's very unique. Baseball is very unique in that in that way. Yes, is, is that Gene? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> solid, dude. Solid parabellum. Well done. Thank you. Well, I, I think this picture, uh, the, the one on the left is actually more current uh, than okay. the, the picture uh, from uh, 2008 for Randy Wolf here. So, um, but yeah, um, but Randy Wolf has been around for quite a while as an umpire. So, um, yes, what about, what about Dusty? Dusty yeah, Wolf. yeah. The, oh. the, uh, from the job squad. Yeah, for definitely. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay, guys. So let's I've done a show. I've done a show with Dusty Wolf. Yeah, have you really? <laughs> what what part of the world? Arizona, baby. Oh, it was Arizona. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
<laughs> wow. Yeah. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. We'll, yeah. definitely, we'll definitely talk about that more later. That, uh, yeah, that's the most, that's the most obscure wrestler I've ever, I've ever worked on a show with. That, that awesome. would actually maybe known to us. Right. Uh, Ox Baker, <laughs> maybe. TV? I, I did a what? show with Ox Baker. Yeah. What? Wow. What? Yeah. That's wow. probably the most. That's probably the most obscure. That's that's fantastic. Love it. That's was amazing. that in Arizona too? That was in Douglas, Arizona, dude. At the rate right. at the it was a Ted DiBiase show. I'm gonna oh, have to tell. I I definitely have to pass along a couple of friends of <laughs> ours who will definitely per, be excited about that. Per, Parabellum. I I uh, I got real used to looking up at the lights, so the answer <laughs> would be no. <laughs> Is there is there really any losing in professional wrestling? You're I think right. like it's 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 always like every time you do it you win. So like uh, uh, I mean it depends on your brain cells later, right? Right, Jack? Well, that's oh. that that's it. That's what? it. Yeah, la- later <laughs> yes, the the CTE is is definitely huh? the uh what what huh? Huh? What? Are you guys talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> hey Bob guys. Buker, Bob Buker was in baseball? <laughs> For a little while. What? For a little while. Check him out on YouTube. He's on Johnny Carson quite a bit. All right.